Congress is back in session this week after the month-long August recess in which members traveled back to their home districts to spend time with their constituents, fundraise, and get work done back on their home turfs. As members arrive back in the district, we've got some info about upcoming legislation on the Hill and a potential government shutdown a bit later in the program. But first, some information about the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, which, as enforced, refers to pregnant women as pregnant people and also promotes abortion. Rachel Morrison is the director of the HHS Accountability Project at the Ethics and Public Policy Center, and she joins me now to explain more. Rachel, thanks for being here. This law is a bit complicated because it's designed to enforce regulations that are put forth by the current administration. Can you explain how the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act is different from other laws? So the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act filled the gap in employment and law and discrimination law by requiring that employers provide their employees reasonable accommodations for pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions unless it poses an undue hardship on the employer. Now, Congress gave EOC rulemaking authority to implement this law and their regulations would be binding on employers once they're finalized. Mm. And you're an expert in this type of regulatory law, Rachel. What language in this version of the PWFA concerns you? The PWFA has pretty basic language. It's supposed to be pro-woman, pro-mother, pro-childbirth, pro-baby. And yet the EOC has decided to interpret pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions as an imposing an abortion mandate on employers across the country that mm -hmm. they have to facilitate and accommodate their employees' abortions. They've broadly defined pregnancy, childbirth, and related medical conditions to cover abortion, potential pregnancy, use of birth control, IVF, and other, other things that are not pregnancy, childbirth, or even medical conditions. Hmm. Interesting. And so what are the actual ramifications of such a law once it's enforced? How does it impact women, for example, when they're seeking prenatal care? Under the law, a woman who's seeking prenatal care who is pregnant would be entitled to a reasonable accommodation unless it poses an undue hardship from their employer. And that's what the law was supposed to do, and that's what Congress intended. However, EOC goes beyond what the law says and what Congress intended to impose this abortion mandate. Mm, very interesting. And can anything be done by members of Congress to remove the concerning language that allows for abortion and more directly apply real resources to the people who need them, Rachel? There's an opportunity after the regulations are finalized for Congress to revoke the regulations since it is controlled by Democrats right now. It's unlikely that that will happen. Ultimately, these regulations will probably end up in court and the courts will have to decide whether a law that does not say abortion once uh, and a law that was passed with Democrat co-sponsors and Republican co-sponsors saying on the floor that it does not cover abortion, whether that law does in fact require abortion accommodations. Mm, we'll be keeping an eye out for that. And Rachel, is there anything else we need to know about this? This is a, an in the weeds topic that not a lot of people are tracking. Anything else we should know? Well, the public should know that the proposed regulations by the EEOC are open for public comment, and they have an opportunity to weigh in and let their voice be heard that these that these regulations should not enforce um, an abortion mandate on employers. If they're looking for an opportunity to comment, the deadline is October 10th. Uh, Catholic, Catholic Vote uh, has an easy way for you to comment. If you Google Catholic Vote, Abortion, Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, it should be the top hit. Um, and folks can weigh in and let the EOC know that this law should be about protecting women, uh, supporting them while they're working and pregnant and after childbirth, and not imposing an abortion mandate uh, to force employers to kill, uh, be party to killing of their employees' unborn children. Mm. Very good to know. Rachel Morrison of the Ethics and Public Policy Center, thanks for joining us. Thank you.